friction losses in fittings and walls. This is the third case. We have already seen two cases. Friction losses in sudden expansion and friction losses in sudden contraction. But what if there is the use of fittings and valves in the flow direction? Fine. Then what is the effect on friction losses? So let us see. Various types of fittings and valves are used in piping system to change the direction of flow for connecting two pipes, etc. We will use the different different types of fittings and valves in flow system for our different different purposes. And valves are generally used to control the flow of a fluid. At that time, we have to study the effect of friction losses. Fittings and valves disturb the normal flow line and cause friction and may lead to greater frictional loss than that caused by the straight pipe. If there is a straight pipe and if there is a pipe including fittings and valves, then in case of the pipe with fittings and valves, there are more friction losses compared to straight pipe. Fine. The friction losses due to fittings and valves may be either in terms of velocity head or in terms of equivalent length. We can describe the friction loss due to fittings and valves in terms of velocity head as well as in terms of equivalent length. HFF which is the friction loss due to fittings and valves. So HFF is equal to KFF V1 squared by 2. Equation is similar to sudden expansion and contraction. So HFF is equal to KFF V1 squared by 2. Where KFF is the loss factor for the fittings and valves. And V1 is the average velocity of the fluid in the pipe leading to fitting. Average velocity in that pipe where fitting is installed. That is V1. Fine. And equivalent length of fitting is that length of straight pipe of same nominal size as that of the fitting. Which would cause the same frictional loss as that caused by the fitting. That means equivalent length of fitting is to be added to the length of the straight pipe. To get total equivalent length of the flow system. If we are doing the equivalent length method. Then we have to add the equivalent length of the fitting. Add that in the equivalent length of the straight pipe. And that will give the equivalent length of the entire flow system. Composed of straight pipe and fitting. Now let us see another topic which is foam friction losses in Bernoulli situation. Here in figure there is you can see in one side there is sudden contraction in area. In second time side there is sudden expansion in area and in the middle part there is the fittings used. So now here in this system we will derive the equation for friction loss including straight pipe including sudden contraction, sudden expansion and fittings and walls. That means this system composed of all the possible solutions. Fine. For that, for obtaining total frictional losses, losses in the expansion, contraction headers and the valve must be combined with skin friction loss of straight pipe. I have already explained you that what is skin friction and foam friction and the total friction loss includes skin friction as well as foam friction. Foam friction due to sudden expansion, sudden contraction and due to valves and fittings. You can see that skin friction loss in joule per kg, we have derived this equation already in our previous lectures. Skin friction loss is equal to 4FL u square by 2D. And the total friction loss for form friction is 4FL that upon D for skin friction. Kc dash plus Ke dash plus Kf dash. Now what is that? Kc dash is the contraction loss coefficient. Ke dash is the expansion loss coefficient. And Kf dash is the loss coefficient due to fittings and walls. So first equation is for skin friction. Second equation is for 
form friction including all possible data given assume that piping system involves straight pipe of length l two globe valve and one elbow these are the fittings elbow is fitting and globe valve also assume that equivalent length of the globe valve is given as x pipe diameter and equivalent length of elbow is given as y pipe diameter now uh, if i want to write in terms of equivalent length fine so in this situation total friction loss is obtained as equivalent length of elbow is y d because it was given that equivalent length of elbow is y pipe diameter and if pipe diameter is d then equivalent length of elbow is y d and equivalent length of globe valve is x d total equivalent length of piping this system l dash is equal to straight pipe length is l so l plus y d elbow is 1 that means y d and globe valve used is 2 that means 2x d so l dash is equal to l plus y d plus 2x and total frictional loss is 4f l dash u square by 2d so i can say that total heat loss due to friction in meter of flowing fluid is given as hf is equals to 4f l by d plus kc plus kf plus ke out of bracket u square by 2g why i have written g because i have written the friction loss in terms of heat in terms of meter of flowing fluid hi so this is the total friction loss for the system including straight pipe sudden contraction sudden expansion and pipe with fittings and valves and this is written in terms of equivalent length so this final equation is the equation of friction loss in terms of meter of flowing fluid fine right? so this equation is used while we are going to solve the examples like this so this is the about theory part of this chapter now let us see one example let us see first the statement of the example it says that acidic acid is to be pumped at a rate of 0.02 meter cube per second through a 75 mm pipeline flow rate of the acetic acid is given volumetric flow rate 0.02 meter cube per second through a pipeline having diameter 75 mm what is the pressure drop in the pipeline over a length of 70 meter in this example we have to calculate delta p for length 70 meter Another data given is density of acetic acid is 1060 kg per meter cube and viscosity of acetic acid is 0.0025 newton second per meter square. So these are the data given. In data we have given volumetric flow rate, diameter of the pipeline, density of the acetic acid and viscosity of the acid. And we have to calculate delta P for length 70 meter. So let's let's now solve the example. Firstly, is the data. Volumetric flow rate of acetic acid is given. Q is equals to 0.02 meter cube per second. Diameter of the pipe was 75 mm, which is equals to 0.075 meter. Be careful while you are writing the units. You have to must maintain the unit consistency. Now I can calculate area. Cross section area is pi by 4 d square. Pi by 4 0.075 square. So cross section area of the pipe A is equal to 4.41 A into 10 raised to minus 3 meter square. Now I can calculate velocity. U is average velocity through pipe. Volumetric flow rate divided by area will give you velocity. You have volumetric flow rate Q as well as area A. You have calculated. So U is equal to Q by A 0.02 divided by 4.41 A into 10 raised to minus 3. when you will solve you will get the answer as 4.53 meter per second so value of velocity u is equal to 4.53 meter per second now to calculate pressure drop first of all you have to calculate the type of flow either the flow is laminar or turbulent because the equation for delta p for both the type of flow is different so you have to first calculate nre 
from that nre value you will get to know type of flow so nre reynolds number is equal to d rho by mu rho is 1060 kg per meter cube mu is 0.025 newton second per meter square put that value nre is equal to 0.075 diameter into 4.53 velocity into density 1060 divided by 0.0025 this is when you solve you will get the answer of nre is equal to 144054 that means this value is more than 4000 that means the type of flow is turbulent now what is the equation to calculate delta p for turbulent flow we will use fanning equation for fanning equation in fanning equation we have to use f so first of all you have to calculate f value then you calculate delta p f is equals to 0.078 divided by nre is to 0.25 this is for turbulent flow if you if the type of flow is laminar then you have to use f is equals to 16 by nre but the type of flow is turbulent so we have to use f is equals to 0.078 divided by nre is to 0.25 put value of nre so f is equals to 0.078 divided by 144054 raised to 0.25 when you solve this you will get the value of f is equals to 0.004 hi now we have all the values so for turbulating turbulent flow delta p is calculated by using following equation this is fanning equation delta p is equals to 4 fl u square rho upon 2d we have all the values rho f u l d put all these value in delta p equation by putting all the values in delta p equation delta p is equals to 1060 into bracket 4 into 0.004 l is 70 meter given in the statement so 4 into 0.004 into 70 into 4.53 square divided by 2 into 0.07 So after solving this, you will get the answer. Delta P is equal to 162416.08 newton per meter square. So this is my answer. Delta P. So by this way we can solve the exam. So here we are completing this chapter flow of incompressible fluid in thin conduits. We have completed all the theory parts as well as examples. Fine. I hope this is clear to all. Thank you.